So hello, my friends, here we are. We've reached the end. We went through the five easy ways series. So five easy ways to use art crayons. We used pigment powders, creative effects glazes, watercolor markers, and texture paste. We created all these beautiful pages in six by eight style. And now what are we gonna do with them? We're going to make our own junk journal art journal. So here are all the tips you need to do the first part. We're gonna break it into two, because it was a lot. Once I sat down and started filming this, I'm like, it's a lot to get through, just building the inside portion of the album. So the first part, part one, which is what we're going to go and watch right now, go and watch right now, is just assembling the book. So it's lots of fun, just watch through, and then catch me for part two, and I'm gonna catch you on the end of the video and talk to you a little bit more, but super excited. So it's Vicki Booten here, and we are creating our own DIY junk journal. Let's go. Okay, my lovelies, I've gathered everything that I need to get started to bind my own junk journal. I have the stack of pages that I created using uh, the five videos that I did with five easy ways to use Vicki Booten products. So we use the art crayons, we use the uh, watercolor markers, the pigment powders, the creative effects glazes, and the texture paste. And then I also blended some of the different products together and came up with my stack of pages that I want to use. These are six by eight format, and then there are going to be a couple smaller pages that I add in here as well. I've gathered a couple basic tools, a ruler, I have some different double-sided tapes, a quarter inch and a half inch. I have a tape runner. I have a bone folder, scissors, and a corner punch. And now let's get started. I gathered all of my favorite pages and I'm going to quickly run through these and uh, give you a couple of details and then we're gonna get started. I have a whole whack here, so let's just kind of go through. Some watercolor stamping, some masking and silver glaze through a stencil, some kissing with the pigment powders, and then I stamped with the texture paste. Another masking with texture paste through a stencil and left this open area here. So you notice some of these are a little bit more mixed media, some are a little cleaner techniques. This is going to be a page that I painted both sides that I'm going to add as a sub page between the one section. Watercolor stamping, I love this technique. So I use the art crayons for that. I have this with um, some kissing technique with the texture uh, paste and then I went through and stenciled some of my new metallic paints on there. So that's gunmetal. I did some doodling and watercolor and then some kissing technique with the glazes. And here's a layer of a whole bunch of different things. Love this page. I stamped on the edge and then just cut around it. So I have a page that will have this kind of die cut edge. And then I did paint the background because when I cut the page down to go behind it, I want you to be able to see something that isn't just the ugly side of this page. Some kissing through stencil. I layered and masked and did some watercolor stamping. This was a bubble technique that I actually did for Scrapbooking Cards Today magazine on their Facebook page. So it was just putting uh, soap and paint and water in a cup, blowing the bubbles and then kissing to the bubbles to create the pattern. Some more watercolor stamping, and this is on watercolor paper. And front and back, because it's gonna be a sub page. Some stenciling with the uh, texture paste. This is what I used on that one. Watercolor with the art, uh, watercolor markers, and then just go through these quick. I love this page. This is with the new uh, prism glaze and did some techniques with that. A couple of smaller pages that are gonna go in here. Adding black is always a good thing. Love that on here, art crayon through a stencil. Just go through these quick. 
So these were all created using the techniques that I went through on those five videos that you can find here on my YouTube channel. And then just did a little stamping. So that's my stack. So now let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is create some hinges. This is the type of binding that we're going to do for this loose leaf uh, binding project. So I cut a bunch of pieces that are uh, eight inches tall. I went slightly, slightly um, shorter than eight inches just because my pages are eight inches and I didn't want any overhang on these. So they are eight by two inch strips that I scored in half. All you have to do is go put it on your trimmer or your scoreboard. This is, I always grab what I have handy and this is what I had up here in the room where I'm filming. So I'm just going to go ahead and score extra ones so at least you have them on hand. We will determine if we need more than what I think I need because this is the first time I'm ever making this project. I kind of just was thinking up ways that I could use all these pages I always have floating around and um, they look pretty and then I don't do anything. I'll, I'll often put them in a junk journal that has binding rings, but I wanted to make something that was um, a little bit more permanent and would make a pretty book that I could share or look at all of the pretty art I created. I also cut two additional pieces that will be um, on the front and the back of the book that will join to the um, covers. So these pieces are three inches by a little bit less than eight inches. And I am going to score one inch and two inch on the other side. So I have a little bit bigger piece that will go underneath the um, cover flaps. We'll go ahead and do that. And now I have a bunch of pieces for my hinges. This is going to be the front page of the album. And then I'm gonna start flipping. These two are going to come together. And then this one is going to go like that. This is going to be a um, add-on page in the book. I'm gonna have that one next. I thought these two went together really well. And then just flip them so you're kind of doing a little bit of planning. I think this one, I'm not sure what that one was for just yet. Oh, yes I do. I just turned that around. So that's gonna go here. This one's gonna go here. This one I'm gonna do something with so we only see part of it on the back of that page. These two are going to go together. So just go through your stack and decide what you want when your page is open, what colors and patterns you want together. And this one is going to be a little, possibly, it could change as we put this together, but I just kind of wanted some kind of order so as we're filming, <laughs> this video doesn't take forever. We'll put that there, and then this one, these go together. This one here, these are two little sub pages in between. And then this guy with this one, look how pretty. And I didn't even plan this, I just, I think I must um, lean towards certain colors. So that's the stack, this is how it's gonna go together. So to give you an idea, right, we're going to need a hinge that goes between these two pages, but we'll do the this page separately. So the um, front page and the back page will add at the end. Okay, so take those out once you decide what you want in what order, and I'm gonna set those aside, and then I'm going to show you what we're gonna do. So I have 
I'll need a hinge for this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. So just make 10 to make sure. I might need 10. I could have just lost my count when I was doing that. So have 10 of those uh, two by slightly shorter than eight inch hinges. And let's get started. So I've moved my stack over to the side so that hopefully you can see everything that's going on. And let's start with some of the folded hinges that I have. So this is going to be my first spread. Don't want to drop all my pages on the floor so let me just move these off the camera or out of the camera and we are going to be putting these together like this okay so i'm going to take a hinge and i'm going to glue one page like this okay and not right up to the center you want to leave a little bit of a space like about an eighth of an inch so that um, they'll close. If you butt them right up to the score line in the center, your pages are um, going to get cut up on each other. So you're going to want to create the two pages here, which is a signature. That's what two pages together will be. And we can just go ahead and add, I'm gonna use that wider tape and just start taping. So this one is a uh, Suquang, and I stuck that on a little tighter than I wanted to. Okay. And then just take your piece off and then adhere it. You have about an eighth of an inch. Maybe not even that much, right? And then go ahead and put your tape on the other side. And I'm going to be doing this for all of the pages. So all of those sections. We'll do a couple so that you can see it. And then I'll just continue finishing up all of my signatures. I didn't mean to do that, but it should be fine. So just make sure the two pages line up as best as you can. Do, do, do. So just do the best you can. And then just take your bone folder, just make sure they're adhered. So there's one signature. Grab from your stack because I do wanna show you this next one is going to have a little sub page that's gonna go with it. Look, I have a mess everywhere already. Never have enough space. No matter how much space you have, it's never enough. So with these two pages, I did want to have a little page that goes in between them. So I'm going to score the side of this, and I think I'm going to fold this. Because this is just one of those things as I'm going along I'm thinking about. So I'm going to go ahead and score about half an inch on one side this is when you see how good your cutting was 
okay, half inch. And that's going to go underneath this one before I then glue it to that piece in the middle, the hinge. So then I can have like a little sub page in there. And then I can fold it either way. We'll decide once it's in there. So get rid of the trimmer. And I'm gonna do this hinge like we did the other ones. Vicky is a messy crafter. And I'm gonna put my tape down. So think about this before you do it, right? This tape is down here and it's gonna be going here. But I'm going to attach that this piece so it is another page in that um, little hinge. So just make sure all of it will work, right? So I think I will glue this one to this page first and then I'll glue it together. So kind of decide, do you want it to go right in the center, closer to the bottom, whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna take this and I'm going to glue it, adhere it to this page, making sure again that you um, leave a little bit of space by the fold so it will actually close. And oh, I was like, and I lost my tape already. I'm gonna go in with a thinner one for this one, okay? And I will put that down, adhere it to the back of the page. And I'll show you this again, because you might be looking going, what the heck is she doing? I love interactive albums. I uh, create these all the time. I'm hoping I'm on the camera too, so you guys can see. Uh, create these all the time in mini book form. And sell the kits or teach the kits. It is one of my favorite things. So see, we're gonna have a page in the page. So we took this, scored it, and attached it to the back. We could have, I, we, I could have trimmed this and made it smaller, but I think I'm gonna fold it so we have a fold and it's gonna open with a flap. So now I'm gonna take this, right? Lift my backing off there and do that again. So we're gonna line that up, leaving a little bit of a space. Okay, put that one down and then this guy is going to go beside it like that. And then we'll decide how we wanna score this guy. Okay, put the tape down. You could put more adhesive if you want, but I don't think we're gonna need it. We're going to do um, something else here. So just for now, this is enough adhesive. And I'm doing some crazy stuff with my uh, tape here. Look at, good thing these pages are nice and thick and you can't see the mess I'm making. Do you do this? Do you throw these all over the place? I should have a garbage bag beside me so that uh, I don't have that giganto mess when I'm done of little pieces. I love when I walk around the house and I see um, all my uh, foam square backings laying all over the house. Love it, okay. So take your bone folder, just make sure it's good and adhered. We have this signature or that and now we can decide do we want it to fold like this I'm saying yes now you could go in here and totally score this and measure it I'm just gonna eyeball it because I think this would be a nice flap but if you want to get more precise and do all the things you totally can I'm going to round the corners on this one just to make it look a little different. Okay, look at that's fun. Take it. And this foundation's paper, because that's what I pretty much have used for all the pages, 
It's gonna be so pretty. And then just make sure, like do this ahead of time before you put the whole book together because then your pages are gonna lay a little flatter. So now, so far, right? We have this signature and we have the first one. So we're going to just keep going and I'm gonna show you a few things here as we go along. I'm gonna put my tape down. And then attach these two. So I'm not doing anything fancy with this one because there's other things I have planned. So, you know what I mean? You don't want, everything shouldn't be the um, golden nugget beautiful page. Some of these can just be simple old double pages. Okay, there we go. So this one's on watercolor paper. So the texture is completely different. And this one is definitely foundations paper. So my foundations paper, it's part of my line with American Crafts is 140 pound. So it has um, some great body, holds the wet mediums really well. So you don't have a ton of buckling. I love that this Suquang tape, uh, you can lift it off the uh, backing so easily because some of them are a little harder and it is a little forgiving. So you can move your pages around. Okay, so there we go, another one done. Right, add that to our stack, put it in the right order. Okay, and next, oh, this is a fun one. Right, very pretty. Oh, there's two of them. What are you doing, Vicky? So I am talking away through all of this and then we'll decide if I speed some of this up, which might end up happening soon because then the video doesn't need to be hours long. Because I know you have other things to do in your life. Sorry if that's throwing a shadow, but you know, leave a little space. And um, I don't know if I mentioned the hinges that I cut, all of these were just out of like uh, white cardstock. You don't have to use like a really um, uh, good or high quality cardstock. You could use pattern paper if you want. I just opted for um, white because most of my pages are white-ish. So you aren't gonna see the binding. And now we have this die cut page and then I'm gonna show you for the next one what we're gonna do. Oop. Because you aren't gonna back it. You could back the next one, we'll talk about that in a second here. Let's Don't get ahead of yourself, Vicki. Sorry that my hand, the shadow with the light, you can't really see when I first put it down, but leaving a little space, putting the pages together. I painted the back of this page and did some stenciling with the art crayon so that when I go to do this next page, um, you're not gonna see it until it adheres together, but I'm gonna cut it down, decide what I want, how much of that I'm gonna want to show. So I think that looks pretty, right? So I'm going to take this one and just make my fancy tool, my fingernail, and we will cut this. So even though you're not seeing this go together just yet, I know that that needs to happen. And then I have a pretty piece I can use for something else after. Put this with the other stack and adhere these two together. But you'll see what's coming with this after. I'll go ahead. 
ahead and put my tape down because we're going to do some other little interactive bits as well because it's going to be fun and I have all of these pages that I made so I have to do something with all of this artwork. I absolutely love making mini albums. So this is a shorter page, but there will be a purpose down the road. Oh, that one fought me a little, didn't it? Okay, put it in my stack. I have this one, and this page is going to go in between it. I'm going to trim part of it off because this isn't going to do anything fancy. I just need it to be slightly smaller than that one. So this is six inches. So I think I'll cut this one, the width of this too, because I still need the piece that's going to be scored on here. So if the width of this is six, I'm gonna cut the width of this at six. Well, let's do that. I just don't wanna lose all that pretty art, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna cut this one at six. And then we have to score this side because it's going to fold under, right? And I did the other one at a half. We'll do this one at a half too. Yay! And remember, we need to attach it to the back of that and decide again where I want it between these two pages. I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna put it right in the center. I'm gonna put this one closer to the bottom. So I will go ahead with the thinner tape. Put the piece down, glue it to the back of this page. Watercolor paper, so be careful that you um, make sure the tape is attached so it doesn't lift on you. Just the paper is a little bit more fibrous, right? And the scissors are a good trick if you don't have super long nails. So I'm going to attach this guy. Look what I did. My tape, no, okay. I need help here. So I need that here. Let's pull this a little bit. I'm gonna do it this way because I think it'll be easier to place it. There we go. Okay, and now we have that page. That will be a page in between. I don't know yet if I'm gonna round the corners or anything, so I'll just leave it. And now we'll put the hinge down between these two. Do, do, do. He has junk laying everywhere. This is gonna be so fun. I love this. So I love making um, mixed media pages like this. And you could totally use this album when you're done as a mini album if you want to, or you can keep it just like a junk journal. You could do some more art journaling in it. You could write in it. You could put photos in it, make an album out of it, whatever you want to do. There are no rules, so do whatever makes you happy. 
And I'm okay if uh, this isn't perfect at the end. If I put this in together and some of these are longer and some are shorter, I don't even care. I'm just gonna go with it. It does not have to be perfect, right? We aren't striving for perfection here. We just wanna make something pretty. Oop, look what I just did. See, look, I just proved my point. <laughs> Not striving for perfection, I just ripped that page. But it'll be okay, because you're only gonna see a little bit of it. And then line those up. I know that this hinge is a little bit longer than the other ones, because I cut it after, and I know that it's the other ones I made um, probably even less than, when I said make it less than eight inches. That one might need a little bit more adhesive in here. So I'm just going to throw a little bit there. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It won't even matter. Don't make more work. Okay, so there's another signature. Isn't that pretty? I love it. This totally could be a mini book. When you're done, you could totally put scrapbook pages in or um, photos in there if you wanted to. Here's our little rainbow page. I'm going to test that. See, that one is shorter. Let's put the tape down. And just keep going. Keep going. So this definitely is my style um, of mixed media. Sometimes they're very pretty art, but can be very simple. Um, everybody's idea of mixed media is different. I find that term often really terrifies people. They're like, oh, I'm not an artist. I don't do mixed media or mixed media is messy. It's not my cup of tea. And I say, hey, you don't know until you try it. It totally could be for you. And uh, mixed media can be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be clean, it totally can. That's why I often refer to it as artful techniques instead of mixed media because that means so many things. Mixed media can like is tons of different styles of art. It's just mixing the media or mediums or whatever. So um, I don't want that to scare you. You really can make this beautiful art and look it and try to put your pages on, not crooked like I just did. And then make a pretty book with just the cardstock and pieces that you have around the house. Hopefully you do. This one will be interesting because this one um, was just out of scrap paper. But good, it is going to fit. So what I'm going to do on this one is they're going to be two flaps. So they're going to stagger. So you still need to score both of these on the side at... The half inch. Is there a preference? We'll see. This one I know for sure. I want to go this way at my half inch. Just score that. It will fold forward like that. And then we're going to decide what side we want these to go. I know I wanted this one to go here this way and then that will show on the other side but then do I want this to go this way or this way I'm thinking this way so I will score my half inch on this one as well yay and then these are going to stagger so you have to decide what you want to go on the front and what you want to go on the back I'm deciding, do I want, I changed my mind. So I'm folding this this way. I don't want the wave to the wave. I'm gonna put the wave on the back. So like this. Hey, I'm doing that with both of them. Flipping that around too. Do I want that? No, I lied. Change my mind, because you can. So it's going to go like this. And then this one I'm going to put behind there 
because I want them to open like this. See, one on top of the other. Okay. So with this one is a little trickier because you want to make sure it's all lined up. So I'm going to have them stacked and then I'll flip it. Open them up. Make sure that was right now. Did I move it? Yep. Okay. And we'll put some tape down. So I'm going to attach them together first, one handed. Eek. Like that. And now they're not going to move on me. So funny, um, when I was getting my stuff together to come and do this, I dropped my scissors and stabbed myself in the toe. <laughs> totally did. Got the scissors in the toe. Good times, right? Ding dong. And I didn't notice till I got upstairs that my toe was bleeding that uh, I had done a good number. I'm just gonna tack this guy down, okay? So going to cut another piece here. Lift that up, just so that's tacked. It's not gonna be pretty. Doop, doop. Get my hinge, and we're going to glue that down there. Let's do the things. Put my tape on. You can hear the movement in my house because I don't know how it is in your home, but I'm crafting in the house with teenagers and a husband. So we never know, they could walk in here while we're working, I gotta remember what I'm doing here. So this is on this side. I almost glued the wrong part. So I hear somebody moving towards the door. So if they come in to visit us, we will just say hi. Because that is the reality of crafting in this house anyway. So because this is a little thicker, I'm going to make sure when I put this guy on, I leave a little bit more space. I want to make sure that it will close, okay? Let's do the things. Did it again. Got to be careful when you lift that piece. I keep uh, just swinging it off there and it's tearing the page a little bit. Okay, and then going to line this one up. There we go. And shut that page. Good times. Okay, look at this, isn't that awesome? Can you see the metallic there? I love that page. Oh, see, this one needs a little bit more tape. You know how I said before, it doesn't really matter. This one, because the paper is so thin, I'm just not gonna take any chances. And I'm gonna put a little extra under it. There we go. Try to get the backing off. Did not make that easy for myself, did I? So um, my craft room is right beside, well, this one, because the my bigger room is downstairs, but the one I film in is upstairs. So it's beside the kitchen. So if you hear stuff starting, microwave or whatever, it's because the, the teenager has left his room and decided he needs a snack. Woo, woo, party time. We're on the last page. So we can decide, do we want another 
insert between these pages because I have a whole bunch I can choose from. And we can decide if we do want another one. We could put that, would be fun. I did not paint anything on the back of that though. So let's do that. But um, later I'll have to add something to the back of it. Go ahead and score my half inch and I might do this one a little bit less than a half so I don't lose all of that pretty blue. Okay. Do -do. Let's do the things, almost. And then we can start putting the whole thing together. This is funny because this is one of those that um, I'm concentrating so much. I'm not talking as much as I normally would. And that makes it a little bit weird. So now I feel like, what can we put on here? I have lots of different things. Let's see if I have one that size that I actually painted. And if it will work. Look at Look at this, so I have an idea. Are you ready for it? I'm gonna have to trim this a little bit and this is going to be a side pocket. But it does need a little bit trimmed off because it's slightly longer. This is always tricky, right? Because I think I just cut too much, but it's okay because later I'll just put a piece on top. I will trim that with something. So I am going to do something. See, this is what we do. This can be a side pocket. I trimmed it too much, but I will put a little um, washi tape or something on there. So we just have to make sure that we score this correctly. So I will make the little mark with my finger now. So you guys can see it. I was showing myself, but not you guys. And I'm going to score it. Look at that's pretty, but I think I'm going to use the other side. Score it. Side pocket. So we're going to put adhesive just here and here so that we can make a side pocket. I'm throwing stuff all over the place. Here. and here and it will open on the side and it will be a side pocket and that is fun okay so ooh, I almost got rid of my tape I'll get rid of the trimmer I want to make sure that I put these so they line up on the edge like that. And then I'll mask the bottom piece there with uh, some washi later. So I'm lining that top edge there Ooh, and that bottom one there, okay. So this is going to be a side pocket in our album. I'm gonna take this and fold it. This is gonna be a little thick, but we will just go with it. Because like I said, this album does not have to look perfect or be perfect. So let's glue that down. And then we remember when we are putting all this bulk on here, we're also going to have to put more tape on our hinge. So stick this guy down and let's kind of recap what just happened here, okay? So this is our left page. And we have to play with this a little so that that page will, I'm gonna turn it this way too, friends, okay? Just so we have, um, it's going to flip and turn well. And it's a side pocket. 
So when we go to glue this down to the hinge, I'm going to put tape on both sides. So we will put some of the th um, thinner tape because this is a little bit more powerful as well. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to put this here. If you know me, you know that, um, yeah, that bothers me a little bit. So I have to clean up my mess. I am making sure I leave a little bit more space. So this will clear the um, fold because it's pretty thick. We'll see. This one might be a tricky one. We'll see if it works or not. But it is certainly a lot more going on. It might have been a good idea, it might not, but we will see. I think it'll be okay. And now this guy will go here. And then I'm gonna show you the other part. And I'm thinking this is going to end up being a two-part video because um, I think we'll decorate the cover on a whole separate video because this is a lot and I would rather it be um, comfortable that you get to do this part and then we talk about doing the cover in a separate video maybe next week. And that will matter if you're watching this on the premiere, but if you're not watching this live with me, uh, you could be doing this three years from now and it will still be awesome. All right, okay friends, so I will be back. Let me grab my whole stack of stuff now. I've gathered all of my stack of pages. So these pages, when they come together like this, is called a signature. So you have the two pages. I have the whole stack of signatures and now I want to bind them together. So as I'm looking through here, I was thinking there are a one, there is one page I would like to bind first before I uh, attach it to the one in front. And that is where I have the die cut page. So let's take that one and just kind of open our album up. And this is the one I just want to make sure it lines up properly because now you are joining the front and the back. So let's kind of, I'll put my stack aside like this because then I know that's where that one came from. And I am going to attach these two pages before I move forward with the rest of the album. I don't know why it might not be important that they're attached first I just feel like maybe I should. I don't know why. I just feel like maybe I should. So I want to talk to you about something that's an option. So as we move forward, I'm going to look at some of these pages and this could totally be, and I think I'm going to make it a side pocket. So I'm going to only adhere it at the top and the bottom and leave this as a side pocket because I don't have art that I ha um, want to put in here yet, but I think it might be cardstock. I might find a piece of like a teal cardstock and stick that in there. So we are going to put some adhesive here and adhesive here, and I'm going to go in with the red line adhesive because I know that it's good and sturdy. And I'm just going to put some at the top. And the bottom of the page. The top in the bottom and I might put some at the side I think I'm going to 
So this is where it's opening, right? So you don't want adhesive here, but I will put a little bit here so that um, the pages stick together at the back as well. Do, 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 do. There we go. And remember I said that the, I could hear the teenager moving. So I just paused the video for a minute and uh, he came to check on me. Are you filming your video? Yes, I am, my love. Yes, I am. Okay, get those here. And then you have to be careful when you go to stick them together that they are lined up properly. So I need that at the top. So I'm just kind of tacking that there. But I also need to make sure it's lined up at the back here. Yay, looks good. Let's make sure it's lined up at the bottom. And I'm committing. I'm committing, my friends. Okay, attach there and there. And now I also can put something. I'll show you with a card. This is not what's going to go in there. Ooh. I'm dropping everything on the floor, but shows you a little side pocket. Isn't that fun? So even though I said this wasn't gonna be a mini album, like look at it, it does definitely have potential for photos. So let's go back to the beginning. And like I said, everything might not be perfect. I could have probably done a better job lining that up, but it will still be beautiful. So here is where that fits in the stack. I'm going to set it aside because what do we have to do first will be the cover. So let's talk about that. So this one still needs its piece, right? We still need its hinge. And I wanna talk to you about that. So this is the hinge that has the um, one inch piece and the two inch. So this was a three by eight inch hinge. And I even wrote that down so I would remember three inch by eight inch. So three inch wide and then I scored it one inch and two inches. And it's going to go on this page like this. So when we go to do the covers for the album, I have a longer piece that will attach underneath the cover page. Okay, so let's attach that and then we can start putting our pages together. So is that clear? If you're not sure, just put comments in the comments section and um, I will hopefully answer any questions that you have. Well, hopefully I can. And I will also make sure, and I'll mention this at the end of the video as well, uh, put links to all of the videos that I use to create the pages inside this album. So some of this was done. Also, I do Facebook Lives on my um, Facebook artist page, Vicki Booten artist page. So after I did each one of the little um, five easy way videos, I also then went and did a uh, Facebook Live so that we could kind of um, elevate some of those techniques and do a little bit more. So that's going to be my front page. And this piece will be extra to go underneath the front cover when we build that. So now we need to take this and this and make our next or join our next pages. So I wanna make sure I line them up on this edge and I might have a little extra here, but it'll be fine when we bind it. So the other thing I wanted to look at is we can make side pockets or top pockets. So I cut all of, or created all of this art so they could pop out of the top of some of these pages. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them, but I have them here. Wouldn't that one be pretty inside? Look it. And then I can tag it and put some things. So I'm going to create this one as if it's a top pocket. I haven't done anything on the back of this one yet, but I can always add that later. So when you adhere, you're not gonna put any adhesive at the top. So no adhesive at the top, 
just at the side, sides and bottom, okay? So I'm going to put it on this front page. Oh, I'm gonna use the red line. And just always double check and make sure your pages aren't upside down because you could be flipping it over, somebody starts talking to you, and then you don't realize that you actually flip the page upside down. So just always double check that when you stick them together, things are going in the right direction. Now, I did not put that very close to the edge, and I should have, but we're just gonna go with it. I like it closer to the edge, so when I'm turning the pages, they won't kind of um, peel apart. I might put a second piece of adhesive once I take the backing off. Okay. That down. And then peel your backing off. And remember, I said I didn't put this very close. So I'm just going to put a second piece right to the edge. So my pages are stuck together nice and firmly. Peel that away. These things are so sticky. The uh, static make it hard, make it hard to get um, that backing off of your hand. So I make sure my pages are going the right direction. Eek. And I want to make sure I line the finished edges up perfectly. go that look at that our albums coming together take my bone folder just make sure the pages are adhered securely and then when I'm ready I have this top pocket as well in the album you can make top pockets you can make side pockets I'm not gonna do it on every page. You could if you wanted to, but I don't want them on every page. Okay, so now I'm going to go and adhere the next one, which is this guy. So it will go like this in your page, and then you'll just keep adhering and deciding what you want to make a side pocket or top pocket. I uh, don't think I'm gonna put any side pockets in this album. I'm gonna do everything from the top. I'm going to put, so now um, my adhesive, this is not a pocket. So I'm going to adhere at the top. Sides and bottom. You could put, if you want, a piece down the middle, which I might, just so the pages are secure together and aren't buckling, especially if you wanted to later add some more um, wet medium. Maybe you wanted to decoupage on these pages. Probably not a bad idea. Even glue stick, Yoohoo glue stick would be great. You could use your brayer to secure the pages when you use the Yoohoo or your glue stick so that uh, you don't have any buckling. I just like the glue stick because it's not super wet. So it will lid here. Oops, make sure you get close to the edge. Look what I almost did because I was getting all excited talking about the glue stick. I want it right at the edge so my pages don't lift apart. Okay.
Okay, so we'll just keep going here and add another page. So let's put some tape down and just keep trucking along. Oops, that is not at the edge. And let's decide before I commit if I want to pocket off the top of this one. Okay, let's look at here. Here are the stack that I have. I definitely love that one. I think it'll be this and this one. They're gonna go in here. So I think I will put one here. And then near the back, possibly here, this side, okay? So I'm just trying to split the pages up a little bit. And this one again is not a pocket, so we can adhere all the sides. Trying to get your tape close to the edge. And we'll just keep trucking. It's like watching paint dry, right? As I put the pages together. Like I said, I think at some point I'm going to have to continue to speed this through because now it's a little monotonous, right? Watching the same thing over and over. I love it. There we go. And we have this guy. And then with the side pocket. And then it's going to, this next page is going to be a pocket. So I'm going to leave it open at the top because I think that will be pretty peeking out there and here. So we'll put the adhesive just at the sides and the bottom. So now for the last page, before the um, actual last page of the book, it's going to be a pocket page. So we're gonna go ahead and just put the adhesive on the bottom and sides to put the pocket page piece in. Throw my adhesive down here. And at the bottom I am loving how this is looking 
is going to be a lot of fun when it's done. But this is definitely a two-part video as I'm building it because um, it's a lot, right? It's worth it, but I think it's better in two parts than in um, a super long video. So we'll finish this and then we will do the cover in a part two. So this is the one with a side pocket as well. Line that up. There. There. Secure. Secure. And we have whichever side we want to show. In our top pocket. Okay. And now all we have left to add is the back page, which is this one here. Clean up my crap. And we need to put the hinge on first. Okay, so go ahead and attach that piece. For the back page. There we go. It has, it's the one, the three inch hinge. One inch was attached to the back, and then we have the two inches that will go under the back page, and then that's gonna get adhered to the back here. So I had you, um, I said we needed a tape runner. I don't even know if we need it at all. Because I wouldn't use tape runner for this because I don't think it's sturdy enough when you are um, using these heavy, this heavyweight paper. A tape runner um, your pages would end up coming apart so you definitely want to make sure you get or use a, a decent double-sided tape so you have the stability that you need to keep all of these pages together because this will be quite the hefty um, nice weight uh, junk journal when we're done because the foundation paper is nice and heavyweight with it being the 140. And we'll attach this final page on here. There we go. All of the pages are assembled now for the interior portion of the album. We have top pocket on our first page and our longer flap that will attach under uh, the front cover of the album all of the pages together, it looks beautiful. Some interior pages, this one has the little side flap. I love it, really came together well. It looks super pretty. Side pocket on our die cut page, and a side pocket. This one has the top pocket, another little um, mini page, the rainbow page, the flaps, top pocket again, and this one is the insert page with the side pocket, and then finally the last page with again the long piece that will go under the back cover. So this is enough to get us started. This is perfect place to stop, and then we'll come back with video number two where we can complete the cover and decorate it to finish our DIY, handmade with all your own personal art, junk journal. So what did you think? Wasn't that a lot of fun? I totally loved creating the pages for this album and then actually putting it together. It's so much fun. The construction part is just as much fun as the making with all of the inky bits. 
And my friends, if you're out there and you aren't drinking the whole mixed media artful technique Kool-Aid yet, it's okay. You could make this out of pattern paper and embellishment, embellish it and put a whole bunch of other things in it. I just think you should give putting one of these albums together a try. That was part one. We built all the insides and now watch for it. Part two will be coming where we're going to build the covers and a little bit more construction to finish the album. And then as well, add some art to the covers and spine. And I probably will add some things on those interior pages like twine and maybe um, punch some holes and add some eyelets and uh, washi tape maybe a little bit more mixed media and artful techniques, but I loved this and I hope you enjoyed it too. I'm going to link below all of the um, Five Easy Way series, right? Where we use art crayon and we used um, all of those things, texture paste and all those things to make these pages. As well, check me out on Facebook at Vicki Booten Artist for additional Facebook Lives that I did where we elevated some of these techniques and mixed them together. And like I said, I'll link it all below. And if you haven't already, please like the video if you enjoyed this. And don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments because if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And then join me again for part two and a whole bunch of additional videos that are coming. I'm hoping that I can inspire you to make a little bit of art for everyone.